The following program is brought to you by a Heroes Nation podcast app, a BMG production. Hey, Bob Griswold here, Ready Made Resources. Uh, just like to take you a quick uh, run through our store here. We try to cover all the bases, uh, everything you would need for preparedness. We have books, we have protective equipment, solar energy equipment, we have canning machines, more solar electric, more solar electric, medical supplies, a lot of food. Uh, food here, you can see the different brands of food we carry right here. Peak Refuel, Wise Food. Uh, again, more homesteading equipment water filtration, more homesteading equipment. This is our new shipping room right here. Where we get, carry it, you can see the peak refuel, the mountain house, and we uh, have yet to put our wood burning stove in, which we sell by Bun Baker. It'll be being installed next week, so uh, we can actually heat with wood and it can even cook in there. And so, just a quick, uh, maybe lineup of some of the things we sell, some of the more popular stuff we have. Uh, we do carry a full line of ham radio equipment, uh, thermal equipment, night vision equipment. We carry the best of the best you can get. With night vision thermal, there's a lot of scams out there. You wanna make sure you know what you're getting. A lot of things can look like this, just like uh, you can get a four cylinder Mustang or you can get a cold uh, Shelby Mustang. Uh, we like to sell, sell towards more of the Shelby. Uh, thermal equipment, and then uh, some of my new favorite stuff right here. Uh, anybody who's had this, it is absolutely the best. This is Peak Refuel and um, Let's see what we've got in here. First of all, this is not to be eaten. Um, sorry, but uh, but again, all you do is add water to this and you pull it out. I don't want to make a mess, but just look at the amount of fruit in there. Blueberries, absolutely scrumptious. I mean, this is the best I, I've ever tasted. Strawberries, the milk's in there. Um, fantastic stuff. The nice thing about this, if you compare it to other brands, excuse me, um, you're gonna get about twice the calories and about half the salt. Um, if you get some of the meat brands, compare the protein. Uh, you're gonna find you're gonna get about 40% more protein compared to other brands. They put more meat in it. So Peak Refuel is my go-to food supply anymore. Uh, try it, I think you'll agree with me. It is absolutely the best stuff I've ever eaten in the freeze-dried food market. Uh, and by the way, uh, you like any of this stuff, uh, you can get me at readymaderesources.com, readymaderesources.com, or call me at 800-627-3809. And let me tell you something, if you call me, there's no pressure to buy any of this. I'm gonna talk you through it. If you wanna get it, you can. But if you call me at 800-627-3809, I'll help you devise a plan to your geographic location your family structure, do you have old people or young people, babies, children? Do you need medicines? Is it cold? Is it hot where you live? All that can change the way you uh, make a preparedness plan. I'll be glad to help you. I'll be glad to consult with you at no, no, no cost whatsoever. So give me a call at 800-627-3809. morning here in eastern Tennessee. Uh, you know, we went from uh, extreme two degree weather where, you know, everything was frozen and now we're back up into the 60s. So last week uh, the weather tried to kill us and now it's being nice to us and we're kind of glad all our snow melted and it looks like our animals are happy again, <laughs> um, even though we brought a lot of them in. We can't bring the cows and the horses in, you know, they're just too big. Uh, but anyhow, so, um, you know, I, I have a special guest with me today. Uh, he's a good friend, uh, Jamie Walden. I mean, his resume is uh, Mr. Resume, I could say. And uh, we're going to be talking about some interesting things. But I just do want to mention, you know, I'm Bob Griswold, Ready Made Resources, um, readymaderesources.com. And I want to thank Tony over at heroesnation.tv for giving us this platform to uh, talk about pertinent issues that are affecting the body of Christ today. <clears throat> you know, I often look at Lot and Abraham, when Lot was kidnapped, uh, Abraham needed three things to go and affect the rescue of his nephew. Um, he needed, first of all, the moral strength and courage that God puts in a man or woman that says, I'm going to do that which is right. I'm going to stand up for truth. I'm going to go into the enemy's camp and spoil him and take back that which he has tried to steal from me. So, you know, weak men don't do that. Girly boys don't do that. 
you have men of courage that do that, men that have been infused with power from on high. And we see all the way, you know, so many saints of God that have stood up to kings, emperors, uh, Caesars, all of it, and said, you know, Daniel, the, the, the three children, we will not bow down to your image. And, and, you know, in these days in which we live, you know, I know Jamie's passion is to give the body of Christ that type of uh, instruction so that we can have that in ourselves. We will, we can look at the situation, look at the paganism, look at the temptation to cave in or, or, or to uh, compromise and say, nope, I'm not going to bow down. I'm going to stand strong. And the, the Lord will deliver me. But even as the Hebrew children, even if he doesn't, we're still not going to bow down and he will deliver us. And so that's the first and foremost thing I, my brother Jamie and I have that we want that passion in our lives. Second, you know, we want to surround ourselves with, you know, men and women, just as Abraham had 318 men when he went to go re rescue um, his nephew uh, Lot. 318 men who were trained in the art of war. Now, I would uh, say today, I want those men and women around me that are trained in the art of spiritual war, which we're going to be talking about because it's coming back in our face like nothing I've ever seen. I think we're in the greatest spiritual war since the days of Noah. And, and so the last thing and the least important thing of all is, um, you know, Abraham had to, first, first of all, I want to mention, they had to travel 175 miles across Judean wilderness. It wasn't some little day junket, you know, they could just walk down the street and, and, and rescue. This was a long trip. It had to have strategic planning, tactical planning to go down there and do what they did. So the last thing, and, you know, and in and, and a lot of ways, the least important because it's a, it's in the temporal realm, but uh, both Joseph and Noah did the thing. They they actually physically prepared their families with, with the necessities of life because the necessities of life are what the Antichrist system this, this godless uh, re great reset we have see coming, which I call the great reset, I mean, the great tribulation, um, you're going to need these things to to ba basically, you know, not be in, entrapped into that system. So the more self-reliant you can become in the physical realm, the, the less you will be coerced in the spiritual realm. Um, that's just my opinion. Uh, but I will say this, uh, you know, the first two the first one being the most important, because if your relationship with the Lord God Almighty is not in, in you know, right, it doesn't matter what else you do. Uh, as I've been fond of saying, nobody with two pair of night vision is going to be in hell saying, well, at least I had two pair of night vision. I had a year's food supply. Nobody's going to say that. Uh, they're going to regret that they didn't make business with the Almighty God and accept his free offer of forgiveness of sins through repentance in Jesus Christ. So uh, I, I want to mention that up front, and then Jamie and I are going to talk to, and I'm going to give him the 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 the, uh, the platform here um, to uh, talk about himself just for a minute, his credentials, and um, the battle that we are facing right now. Jamie, it is with a lot of love. I know you've prayed for me. I know we've we've broken bread together. I know we've done so many good things where God has moved in our midst, and I want to welcome you here today. And uh, thank you. So why don't you give me a brief introduction? Yeah, thanks, Robert. It's good being on with you. Obviously, we always have amazing fellowship over the phone and, and you know, quite a few times where I've been able to even come out with my family and stay with you and your family there in Tennessee and, and see at different events and stuff like that. So it's good to be on here just fellowshipping with the Lord with the other listeners and, and hopefully it'll bless them. So uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with me, my name is Jamie Walden. Um, I have a background in Marine Corps infantry. I was a sergeant in the Marine Corps. Went to college, got the did the degree thing, totally worthless, right? Uh, ended up uh, working with the U.S. Marshals for a little bit. They're on a hiring freeze, so I rolled over into local law enforcement <clears throat> before making a transition into fire EMS. Became a paramedic and was a firefighter on a tech rescue team doing tactical EMS and stuff like that. Before kind of liquidating our realities and uh, becoming full time missionaries and going into ministry, uh, my family and I. We were in the Dominican Republic for a couple of years where we worked with a therapeutic boarding school for teens and helped kind of on a, on a ground level build up safe houses for uh, uh, victims of child sex trafficking down there. And then uh, on return from the Dominican Republic is when the Lord burned me to write the book, Omega Dynamics, equipping a war class of Christians for the days ahead. And so since then, I've been um, pastoring uh, several churches and preaching and speaking and teaching. I do have 
with family emergency disaster planning, uh, combat pistol, combat rifle courses. And, uh, and, and then I focus on gathering the saints, you know, and, and in the midst thereof, one of the, my passions is research. So, so I do, uh, similar to Robert, a lot of research in a lot of different areas from theology and doctrine to antediluvian age, you know, pre-flood historicity, archaeology, things like that. I've been a part of a, uh, archaeological team and expeditionary team in Peru for a network TV show, uh, looking at pre-flood stuff, elongated skulls and, you know, monolithic me megalithic structures and all that. So it's kind of this amalgamation of, of all kinds of different things that the Lord has laid in my path. But at the central of it is that we would know our identity in Christ and we'd be so solidified in it because you and I, Robert, know what's coming. And so that's my burden is, is that it, it, Daniel 1132 speaks very plainly that those who know their God shall go forth and do exploits, or as it renders, those who know their God shall go forth and do daring feats of valor. That's a perfect lead into what you were talking about, about Abraham and, and the three components that it took for Abraham to do what he did in the days a lot. And, and it was centered on courage. And the only way that you can rightly have courage is if you're filled with overwhelming fear, everybody tracking, right? Like you cannot have courage without fear. It's, it's literally impossibility. They're symbiotic. So the, so the answer to the question is, is what is the object of your fear? See, when your object of your fear is only ever centered on the fear of the Lord, you will be strong in the Lord and you will go forth and do daring feats of valor. You can be nothing other than courageous. You throw open the doors and you pray no matter what the government says. You, you, you're you willing to push back. You're willing to enter into the king's presence like Esther, knowing that you'll be put to death. But it doesn't matter because the fear of your, your God trumps everything else. You will be like the apostles and like the disciples and like the church of Acts that... I, no matter how many times they arrest him and beat him and try to murder him and malign them and confiscate their profit, their, their property, they count it a joy that these things occur to them and they're commanded to never speak the name of Jesus again. And what's it say? As they went out from prison, they proclaim the gospel all the more boldly. Why? Cause they were men of courage, men and women of courage. And so anyways, that's, that's a good, good central theme to speak on. Well, the same thing with Daniel. As soon as Daniel knew that the law had been passed, that you couldn't worship any other God except the king for 30 days, you know, he went home, you know, he didn't hide in his closet and, and you know, secretly pray. He went out, opened his windows up, got in the, the high parts so everybody in the city could see him, knelt down and prayed to God. Yeah. And, and, you know, because he was he was he was a man that was not afraid. Same thing with the three Hebrew children. Throw us in the fire. And and, and, now, and now nowadays we have narcissistic, you know, uh, even jellyfish pastors that'll shuttle their church and hide and cower from the government for any little thing in order to keep their tithes coming in. So like you, there is the Lord does make a distinction. Even Malachi three sixteen through four, three talking about the end of the age. He says that he will once more finally praise god distinguish the righteous from the wicked those who serve him from those who do not he is going to distinguish and and he dis distinguishes through uh narcissism through cowardice and through a love of self right they'll be lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of god lovers of self they will they will have the form of godliness but deny the power thereof like it is seen church they will say they're wealthy and in need of nothing having no regard with the for the fact that god says that they're rich and pitiful poor blind and naked and they're like hot vomit in his mouth so like the lord does make a distinction and the distinction is on those who love their own lives and they love the world and things of the world so much that they won't sacrifice them for anything versus those who know the blood of the lamb. The word of their testimony is bold and resolute and steadfast, and they do not love their lives so much as they're afraid of losing. And they, and that, follow, that, they follow the lamb unto death. Exactly. And it always comes back to who is the first ones God does business with? The cowards. It's the first ones he does business with. For, he's like, he's like, you're number one on my list. You're going to Lake of Fire, the cowards, because it's such 
an offense to who him and the son and the Holy spirit, the Trinity and who, who the, even the created order, his righteous rule and government is not centered on cowardice. It's courage, honor, courage, commitment, selfless sacrifice, servant leadership. It has nothing to do with cowardice. So that's why it's such an offense to him. You know, Jamie, I was reading a statistic that said 56% of the Protestant church today has openly supported LGBTQ. And, you know, not only that, but we just see just the cowardice you're talking about, but spiritual darkness through just absolutely abhorrent false doctrines re-entering the church. And I'd like you to comment on this or agree with it or disagree with it, but comment on it, that we are in the gravest and most dangerous spiritual warfare humanity's been in since the days of Noah. What do you say about that? I'm I'm in total agreement. And I say that from even an empirical objective reality of comparative history. When you look at which that's my background, right? I have a degree in history and then obviously kind of have traveled the world. So I'm doing a lot of this archaeology and historical stuff. But um, comparatively, the U.S., is the most reprobate nation in the history of humanity, in particular, the United States of America. And the thing that makes it so dangerous is that we have the illusion of piety. It's an illusion of piety, which is what makes it so mm-hmm. dangerous. It, it's it's beyond comprehension. So you look at the days of Noah, what was central to the days of Noah, while well, all flesh was corrupted and the earth was filled with violence. There is no greater act of violence than ritualistic pedophilia, legislated, indwelt from top to bottom, from your local governments to your federal governments, to the music industry and Hollywood industry, and everything in between is centered on violence against children, violence against children that are born sexually against their poor, helpless little bodies, violence against children while they're still in the womb, and then violence against women and children through pornography. It's only ever about violence. J- so Jimmy, let me address the that whole real quick. earth is filled with it right now. You, that recent gentleman who, I'm going to call him a gentleman, that recent man who was just arrested, you know, people think pornography is harmless, you know, that these women are just, you know, getting money for doing it. Maybe there are some that do that, but um, more and more, we see that women are being forced into this. This isn't something they want to do. They're being forced. Is that man forced? He had sex slaves. He was forced to make pornographic movies. So when you're watching those videos, you're actually watching people who are profiting on women being degraded. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, the thing that gives us this difference is the technology that we have to proliferate. Exactly. This you know, it's the technology. Yep. Jordan Peterson said this, and I so agree with it. You know, a modern man today or woman has the ability to look at more perversion in one day than Caligula could in his lifetime. Yep. And, and that that is a staggering thought. And and we see it. And, and, and that's the thing that people can't connect the the reality of the depth of where we're at. And even this is the most fearful thing is that it's normalized to where it doesn't even affect them. It doesn't see their mind. They're not tearing their clothes and throwing ash on their head. They're not like Lot, who was tormented, tormented in his righteous soul by what he saw and heard in this city day and night. You know, I just got back from the Dominican Republic. I was down there uh, just less than three weeks ago doing counter child sex trafficking work. That's that's one of the worlds that I operate in. And in the central theme to all the sex trafficking that I was doing on the Dominican island, by the way, that's an island in the Caribbean by a lot of other islands in the Caribbean, like Epstein Island and all the other islands that funnel all the way through to Ukraine to the Hunter Biden laptop. It all funnels through these island nations down there in the Caribbean. And what the central theme was down there was there was about an 800 fold uptick in sex tourism and in the debauchery and in the children in the transvestites in the sex industry as we are doing investigations. It is unbridled, unbridled the the lawlessness of the perversity that's going on and again it's only ever centered on violence and an open affront against the holy god you know jamie when when the scripture says the world was filled with violence it it, I'm, i'm sure it was physical violence where men beating each other men killing other men but it goes deeper than that and i think that's what a lot of people vision and you know you see these john wick movies and all this stuff that just has absolutely horrific violence for violence sake you know graphic heads exploding type violence um but it's also violence against the order of god i think that's more what it's talking about you know god gave marriage 
God gave his law. I, you know, somebody was making fun of, of, of the laws of God. You know, we, you know, the Bible speaks against almost, well, it also speaks against owning your slaves and all that. Well, you live in a depraved culture, which the, the Canaanite culture was so depraved, God had to put those laws there because it was the, the worst of the worst of humanity was being displayed. And he put some boundaries on it so that people would still stay within the boundaries. But today, every one of those laws is being disregarded and not only disregarded, but absolutely celebrated in the opposite direction. We celebrate the wickedness. We just don't hide it anymore. We don't go in the closet and perform it. We celebrate it. And you know, one of the most disturbing things I saw Jamie recently was there were two young girls, I would say prepubescent or right at pubescent age. And they had these Frankenstein scars from armpit to armpit. I mean, literally a Frankenstein, horrible scar, not some little thin scar, this big, ugly scar where they had been, the, the their, you know, breasts had been yeah, a, a double mastectomy. Yeah, yeah they get was, the, the double mastectomy. Who yeah. did this? What demonic mind could do this? Which which brings me to the, to this thing, you know, I, I and I want you to comment. First of all, I want to say this. The reason we see so many pastors falling because they don't have a high view of scripture. They have a low view of scripture. It's scripture plus whatever they feel of the day. <clears throat> they don't have a high view of God's glory. That's the first and foremost thing that I'm concerned with is God's glory. It's not my bank account. It's not my health. It's not anything else. My first and foremost concern is how do I bring God glory? And I think the church has lost that. And then the, the, the other thing is we see so many of these pastors today are in it for themselves. You know, they want to get up on, and they have these $3,000 shoes and all these fancy clothes. It's it's for themselves to bring themselves glory and not God glory. <clears throat> so I'm just I want to encourage people. You better have the highest view of Scripture. You better understand that it's not about you. It's about your life's purpose is to bring God glory and honor. And then third, you know, you better make sure that you keep a short order with God and don't let all that leaven into your life that is just so prevalent today. But, you know, Jamie, I, I wanted to mention that um, because with this, I felt the other night I was out with my wife and, you know, I had a couple of folders in my brain opening. <laughs> yeah, you know, I know how that goes. I didn't close all the windows down. You know, there were yeah, but I, I, I know that feeling. <laughs> okay. But I was sitting there talking, we were having a great time. And, but all of a sudden, um, several things came and I'm going to say what came first and then we'll just, uh, came last. The, the Lord just dropped in my heart and it was very foreboding and sobering. Great trouble, great trouble and wrath are coming to the sons of Adam. Do you agree with that? Oh, I, I unequivocally agree with that. I mean, I, I, I don't do this for any like hyperbolic sensationalism or anything like that, but I am, legitimately grieved in my spirit constantly. I mean, there's, it, it's like the, the cycle of emotions, right? When you're in mourning, it's like anger, despair, you know, like, uh, uh, confusion. And then it's like, you know, maybe there's some Thanksgiving and joy mixed in there, but it's like, I cannot believe the reality of what's going on. And I, what I can't believe is that nobody cares and sees it coming. I mean, I'm, I'm up absolutely confident, which confidence doesn't mean that it's right, but I'm confident all the same that America is mystery Babylon unequivocally that America is a mystery Babylon. When you get a peek behind the veil, not just the deep state, the deep state is such a superficial level, but when you get a peek behind the veil with the adepts, the occultism, the mystery schools, what our foreign policy is, what we're doing in, in other nations, right? Our, our economic hitman posture, our perversions of depopulation and sterilization and vaccination and our pharmacia, our sorceries, right? That, that makes the whole world drunk, our immorality, that we promote. I've spent the majority of my my 20s and 30s traveling the entire world embedded in cultures, not just popping in on, on tourist type stuff, but embedded in the cultures. And all of their culture decay and all of their depravities is, is depravity is centered around the American technological advancement and our sexual immoralities. Go read Revelation 18. And so I say that unequivocally that I mean, it, it's 
what I'm amazed by is the Lord's patience. We'll put it that way. I'm Amen. amazed by his patience, <clears throat> his forbearance and his long suffering, not wanting any man to perish, but all to have everlasting life. He is unbelievably patient with this reprobate nation, the United States of America, but he is also just, and he's holy and he will not be mocked. And we will reap what we sow. We've sold according to our flesh in manners that you can't even, I just got back from the Dominican Republic where they're talking about, hunt camps, hunt rape camps. Let's put it that way. And the only people that are visiting these hunt rape camps are Americans. So like the level of mystery Babylon is insane. And the Lord is going to deal handily with us. And that gets into everything that we see going on right now. Right. And I know these are things that you're going to touch on, but the pandemonium and the panic and the and the pansexualization and and obviously the the setting up because of all these different realities of terraforming the the globe and the human populace with this reprobate mind is it's going to be the wholesale destruction initially of the united states of america and then onward to the rest of the world when we enter in to the second half of the tribulation period. You know, that's that's the folder that was open in my mind the other night when I was having dinner with my wife. And it started a couple months ago when I was reading uh, St. Augustine, the city of God. And he went in the first chapter to describe how Christians were so hated um, uh, due to the fact that uh, we um, forbid the worship of the old pantheon of God. So when anything bad happened, they just were blamed for it, whether it was a hurricane, earthquake, sacking or whatever, Christians were blamed. And so I just started thinking of this. And then when I was at dinner with my wife, the word pan, like the deity pan came to mind. And with that, I just started thinking about it at dinner. And then when I went home, I was pondering upon it, went to sleep, woke up at like two o'clock in the morning and started studying it. And then that's why I found out that the God pan, which has evolved into the Baphomet, the, the great horned beast, goat, you know, um, word, the words that came from pan are pandemic, which created panic and pandemonium and a and great increase in transsexualism. And so as we see, you know, America forsake and the world forsake the God of heaven, the one true God, the creator of all and his, and the, and, and his, and, and his son, Jesus Christ, we are seeing this pan, this void being filled back with the gods, the deities that once the Christian church bound and closed the gate on them. They're now flooding back at us and we're seeing all of this evil come upon us. I just think, Jamie, you can comment on it, that you've seen the Gothard Tunnel video. Yeah. You've yeah, seen uh -huh. the CERN Unbelievable. Yeah. Tunnel. They, they're just absolutely baphomet creatures and they're open. And both of those, think about it. CERN represents a gate, a portal. Yep. And that tunnel represents a portal. They both represent portals. And yep. out of that, this Baphomet and this evil wickedness, sexual perversion comes. And then we saw the Commonwealth Games with that, you know, huge mechanical bale beast bull came out breathing red fire and all this. And these women were around it and, it, and, and they weren't just worshiping. It was of a sexual nature where they were worshiping it. Yeah. And so we're seeing all this flood back in. Um, what is this? Where does this go? What does this go for the world? And that, you know, what does it? Yeah, go? it's it's interesting because even all this stuff with with Pan as as the uh, as the preface word to all this stuff going on is is it at the end of the day is it's a tearing of the veil as Christ tore the veil in a counterfeit move they're going to seek to tear their veil and they tear it through the currency of their dark economy and the currency of their dark economy is blood and it's fear blood and fear what are the currencies of god's economy blood and fear the blood of his son they require blood our god gave blood right they they try to steal fear our god commands fear he says do not fear do not fear do not fear do not be dismayed do not be discouraged 365 times he says do not fear anything i've not given you a spirit of fear except for one thing there's only one thing your fear should ever be revered re, uh, reserved for and that is for me and me alone right and so the currencies of both belligerents are both blood and 
fear, one to the wickedness and to the evil, and the other to eternal life, and to the washing and the cleansing and forgiveness of sins, right? And to the glorification of God the Father. And so there is this thinning and this tearing of the veil going on in real time. And the reason why you've already touched on it is not because of the lawlessness of humanity. Humanity has always been predisposed to sin. Hello. That's not yes. why it is. It is because of the lawlessness in the church. Second Thessalonians two, the man of perdition, the man of sin, the antichrist himself, the lawless one incarnate lawlessness incarnate. It says he cannot be revealed until the great lawlessness in the church happens first. The, the, the great the apostasia, church. the official revolt or defection from a religious truth. It's like the reason why this panic and this pan and pandemonium and this pandemic and everything else is breaking on the scene, why the elites can openly talk about child sacrifice and wear adrenochrome around their necks and wear the eye of Horus for all their jewelry. The reason why they can do all these things, all the revelations and the people do nothing is because the church is lawless first it will not have this man god almighty and his anointed to rule over them they are lovers of self and lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of god so that's why it's all breaking on the scene that's why i say the number one indicator to me the lateness of the hour is not the objective it's not the the volcanism right and the earthquakes and the earth changes and stuff like that even the wickedness of governments the number one indicator of the lateness of the hour to me is the apostasy of the church, the only ones who carry inside of them the truth that can set dead men free. You know, Jamie, we got about five minutes left. Um, I want you to, to discuss what people need to be doing, because, I mean, we could go on hours and hours and hours talking about the wickedness that we see. And yeah. it's, just, it's, it's manifest in our city. Nuts and bolts, brass tacks. You know, it, it's it's what do we need to be doing right now as people who want to please God? I, I'm I'm a, I'm an old you know, Orthodox Christian, and the first question in the Westminster Confession of Faith is what is the duty of man? Um, and the duty of man is to bring God glory and to enjoy His presence forever. So, what do I do in these days when wickedness is so prevalent that we keep our eyes focused? And my and when I stand before the Lord God on Judgment Day, I hear those words, "Well done, thou good and faithful servant." How do I, how in this wicked world do I bring God glory and honor and honor his son, the Lord Jesus Christ right now? Yeah. The, the number one thing that, that even when I'm counseling people all the time is to purify your camp. I think at Joshua seven, all the time, the sin of Achan, God says, you have been made liable for destruction on the field of battle because you have unclean things hidden inside your camp. You cannot stand until you remove them. So it really is about a crucifixion of the flesh, a mortification of the flesh and of the sin, a dying to the love of the world and the things of the world. Like it's about a kingdom mindset eyes fixed on Christ Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith for the joy set before you and during all that you're going to have to en endure. And so it can only come by having new lenses placed on. And so many people, so many Christians, they absolutely love the world. And I can't wrap my mind. They love it. They love everything about it. They love their IRAs and their 401ks. And they love their plans for the addition on their house. And they they love that that they they can't wait to see their, their grandkids grow up and get married. They love everything that this world has to offer. They love their affluent churches and their coffee bars in them. And what they do not love is the heart of God. The love, they do not love the heart of God to go into thick darkness and dungeons and deliver people from bondage. They don't love the binding up of souls. They don't love, they don't love to hate evil. See, because they don't know love. See, the opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love is indifference. See, authentic love will hate. God says the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. They, they're say nothings and do nothing. So really it comes down to, we must die to this world and have such an eternal focus and such an identity rooted in Christ and knowing that your life is hidden in Christ that you don't even fear losing your own life. You've counted the cost. You know, the reward is great. It's not even worth comparing to the glory. It's going to be revealed. And you're willing to go all in, even in the little things like what apps do you have on your phone? What, you know, streaming services do you subscribe to? What things are you reading and fill your mind with? What is the focus of your heart? Because whatever 
the focus of your heart is that's what your treasure will be. And that's where all your attention and all your affinity goes to. If, if it's the Lord alone, then you will be strong in the Lord and you will be equipped to go forth and doing air doing exploits. But if it's in this world, I tell you unequivocally, you will be consumed, chewed up and spit out by these things that are coming on the world. Jamie, we've got about a minute and a half left. Would you say a quick prayer uh, uh, for people listening right now that, that that passion would be put in our hearts that we would experience revival? And how do people get in touch with you if they want to, yeah. uh, you know, talk with you or um, sure. You know, Absolutely. People can, can get a hold of me at a Omega dynamics.org or Calico Buffalo base uh, You can also find the book on uh, Amazon or other places where books are sold. Um, but yeah, let, let, let me pray us out, brother. I appreciate the time that we've had today. So Lord, we do thank you and praise you that we know that if we, if we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to heal us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Lord. And I praise you, God, that, that you, your eyes are ranging throughout the whole of the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to you. So I pray, Lord, that we would seek to be fully committed, that we would die to ourselves and die to this world and the things of the world so that you can rule and reign of us, Lord, and we can turn many back to righteousness in this dark hour. And I just praise you, Lord, that nothing is out of order. Nothing's out of order at all. And that you are patient for our sake, for the forgiveness of sins and for bringing many sons of glory. God, help us to come into our mission set and to live and operate with honor and courage and commitment to your glory with whatever time and whatever lives and whatever resources you've given us, God. And we just thank you for the opportunity to proclaim your name boldly. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Brother, it's been great to have you here and I look forward to doing this again. Yeah, thanks I, for I having me you, on, Jamie. Robert. Love you, Jamie. You've been listening to Heroes Nation Podcast, a BMG production. Klaus Schwab from the World Economic Forum has said, you will own nothing and you will love it. And that's represented by what's going on across the planet today, where the economy of the world is in free fall and nowhere is it more in evidence than with our own President Biden deliberately trying to sabotage what we have, access to food, other resources. So Americans are in a unique position, really for the first time in our history, we're gonna to have to provide for ourselves or subject ourselves to the whim of the government. Do you really trust a government to feed you that left a thousand Americans behind enemy lines in Afghanistan? I don't think so. So where do you go? When you ask the question, who's the best prepper out there today? There's only one answer. Ready Made Resources and Robert Griswold. I call him King Prepper. And that's how a lot of people think of him. You have everything there you'd want from night vision to storable food, how to prepare cooking in emergency situations, books and videos on how to prepare alternative energy, communication, first aid that you wouldn't think of, natural antibiotics, you name it, Bob has it. Now, here's the good thing about Bob Griswold that no one else does but him. You don't have to buy anything to talk to him. If you're not sure where to start with your preparation, no obligation phone call directly to Bob. You can talk to him for free. Most people will charge you an arm and a leg for a half hour conversation. That's not Bob Griswold. He cares about helping America get prepared. Go to readymaderesources.com or you can call the number directly at 800-627-3809. Again, that contact information, readymaderesources.com for the best prepping outfit in the country or call Bob Griswold directly, 800-627-3809.